Hello everyone, welcome to my academic lecture series and today we are going to talk about the concept of development. The concept of development is widely used in our day-to-day -day life as well as in the academic literature. In its day-to-day -day use, the concept of development is nothing new. The meaning and perception of development is continuously changing. For example, if getting electricity was termed as development earlier, maybe getting satellite TV connection and internet connection is what you call development now. So there is no single definition of the term development. And more interestingly, it can vary from place to place, time to time, and even individual to individual. So development is a complex phenomenon comprising many dimensions. It is not only about the economic development, it's also about social development, political development, and also administrative development. Now, if you ask the economists, they will say that per capita income and GDP growth are the two major aspects of development. But if you ask the political scientists, they will say political freedom and freedom of speech and expressions are the most important aspects of development. But for the students and experts of development studies, per capita income and the assurance of basic necessities of life and also the freedom of speech and expression are equally important for development. So if we look into some of the definitions given by the scholars, the first one that comes into my mind is from Gunnar Middel, as he said, development means the process away from underdevelopment of rising out of poverty. So going away from underdevelopment and poverty is what we can call development. And there is another famous quote by Widener, as he said, like development is a state of mind, a direction rather than a fixed goal. So it is a rate of change in a particular direction. If we focus on four aspects of development, and you can add even more ideas to this. So in economic development, you have national income, you have poverty reduction, and you have more equitable distribution of wealth and income. In the political aspect, you have to develop the political system to deal with its own fundamental problems, and it should be more responsive to the changing political demands of the people. In terms of social development, it focuses more about bringing improvement in people's social life by providing health, education, housing, and cultural amenities. And administrative development is more about the development of the administration, which is responsible for delivering development. So you have to develop the administration, and also the administration should deliver the development projects. So this is how this all are related. By far, you must have understood that the concept of development is not to mix up with the use of this word in the name of the construction and real estate companies. Rather, in a broader sense, construction of physical infrastructure is just one part of development, when there are multiple other dimensions of it, as you have seen. So, in its essence, the idea of development is a lot more than what we use it in our day-to-day -day life. Now, moving to the academic use of development in the social sciences and particularly in development studies discipline, we can see that development is a contested term. The development experts often say that the idea of development has its contemporary root in the post-Second World War era. But the early conception of development was actually promoted by the Western industrial nations in as early as 19th century. So the idea first used by the Western industrialized nations was a top-down approach and to some extent the idea was demeaning for the countries of the global south in Asia, Africa and Latin America. The early conceptualization of the idea of development was it that the then developed countries of Western European nations are in a master role to dominate and civilize the less developed countries in the Asia and African regions. The Western European countries did all the colonization activities in the name of development and in the name of promoting civilization. And even famous experts like Quinn and Shenton in their articles have boldly traced the origin of modern development doctrine back to the writings of the Saint Simonians and more especially of August Cote, as we know as a famous political scientist. 
in their writing as early as 1820s. However, this colonial root of the idea of development is often ignored in the contemporary development studies. Uma Kothri in 2005 book argued that many of the contemporary development studies experts distance themselves from the negativity related with colonialism and instead they present a truncated version of history that the idea of development almost starts from 1950s or late 1940s in all the development literature. In popular development literature, the term development gained mass popularity in the changed global reality after the Second World War with subsequent decolonization process of the colonized countries. The development planning became central to the policy making in the newly independent countries. And as the Bretton Woods institutions, as we know, the World Bank and IMF are called Bretton Woods institutions. So by 1950s, these institutions rose to prominence for helping the less developed countries in devising and financing the development projects and planning. So the idea of development in 1950s was predominantly centered on economic growth. So development was perceived as economic growth. Later on, the growth-centric development idea was heavily criticized for its failure in bringing prosperity in the life of the masses, while a small portion of the society continued to gain wealth and there was a huge inequality between the rich and the poor people. And that's why most of the development experts who view this idea very critically, they say that the development is not a naive concept and rather it's a Western instrument to exert influence in the less developed countries, mainly in economic and political interests in the name of development. So as the development planning in 1950s and 60s failed to deliver what it promised, the idea itself evolved to incorporate other social and environmental aspects rather than only its focus on economic one. The first major change in the mainstream understanding of development occurred when United Nations Development Program, or officially known as UNDP, acknowledged that there are importance of other aspects like life expectancy and literacy along with the economic development idea in measuring human development in 1990. Broadening the idea of development to human development was the first step in defining development in a new way, in a little bit comprehensive way. But the idea still had limitations as it was unable to incorporate political and cultural aspects in the idea of human development. At around the same time when the first UN Human Development Report came out in 1990, the UN also organized the first Earth Summit which is also known as Rio Summit in 1992 and responded to the growing concern regarding ecological crisis and the environmental crisis and the necessity to address the environmental issues in the contemporary development discourses. It's important to note that the idea of sustainable development first came out in the Our Common Future report by Brundtland Commission in 1987 but the idea came into prominence with the Rio Art Summit. And we got the most cited definition of sustainable development from our Common Future report as it states that sustainable development is a kind of development that meets the needs of the present generation without compromising the ability of future generations to meet their own needs. So it focuses more on the intergenerational ability to meet their needs given the limited natural resources available. While the idea of sustainable development has been often acclaimed politically, on the other hand the academicians and researchers have criticized the all-embracing nature of the concept as it puts the contradictory idea of environmental sustainability and economic growth in the same basket and not giving specific direction on how the environmental sustainability can be ensured while also achieving the economic growth. And as we have seen from 1992 to 2018, the idea of sustainable development has come a long way to dominate the global development discourses as now sustainable development goals have become a global pledge for all the countries. So coming from a very much growth-centric idea of development towards a new idea of human development and then a broader idea of sustainable development has defined 
the development discourses throughout the second half of the 20th century and the first two decades of the 21st century. Thanks for watching the video. Hope you have liked it and please subscribe to my channel and stay tuned for the next video.